wellness friends. Today I'm excited to introduce you to Sherfu Ramon and he owns the Blue Lotus Health and Acupuncture uh, facility here in Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. It's good to see you again, Kelly. Got a really cool space here in Lexington on Versailles Road and you do acupuncture, is that correct? Yeah, and other Chinese medicines as well. Other Chinese medicine. Herbs, Twena, cupping. Uh, and I teach Tai Chi and Qigong, Bagua. I come from a physical therapy background, so I uh, treat patients for similar injuries, but I don't know a lot about uh, acupuncture. Can you tell me exactly what, I, I know that's a topic that's just cr crazy involved, but just for laymen, what basically is acupuncture and how does that help people? In China, acumoxa would be the use of needles or of moxibustion, but in America we tend to focus on the acupuncture part, and it is the use of uh, filamentary needles. Um, anciently, they weren't filamentary. That's a AD invention to uh, insert in the body to uh, mediate energy flow, blood flow, reset muscles, and improve the overall health of the person. Unlock, essentially, catalyze their own abilities to heal. Sometimes the body gets stuck in certain... Uh, energetic mode. Sometimes physically a bone will become lodged on another bone and by softening the fascia you can get it to actually kind of want to come loose. And frequently people come in because they're fed up. It's unfortunate it'd be better if they used us as primary medicine but frequently it's because they've become stuck in their um, current status and they want to change the game and acupuncture is extremely excellent at transforming uh, their situation. Um, it's just as powerful as Twena, it's just different. Twena, you use your hands, you can hit thousands of acupressure points, and it's sort of like massage, and bones get set spontaneously, and uh, although there is a hard type of Twena where you set, you know, very aggressively, I don't do that, everything's nice and soft, it's, it's hard enough when you get deep into the tissues anyways. Uh, so both of them create a transformation of the, of the body and of the condition. Um, there are chemicals that get released by the body. They've done studies, uh, dopamine, serotonin, endorphins. And the endorphins are stronger than morphine. Uh, but those are all reuptake by the body. So it's really important to actually transform the person's condition. And there's lots of different styles of acupuncture. There's lots of different ways of approaching it. Um, you know, I went to school for uh, you know, TCM, which was the official exported from the government version. Uh, there's a lot of family lineages, and then there's Japanese and Korean versus Chinese. Um, I have a pretty versatile uh, st style. Uh, usually they show that most acupuncturists are using about 60 points out of over 400. I use probably over 200 points. I would say I, I use probably close to 300 points, but I don't use them... Sometimes I don't use certain ones very often. Some are almost every treatment, like liver three or something, 36. So uh, they have, uh, they've been around for a long time. Nobody really knows where, how they were discovered. Um, they do know that the original needles were chicken bones and chiseled stones. And then they became almost like dagger, letter opener kind of uh, uh, shape. And uh, they used to do bloodletting. We don't do that anymore. Um, they're all, of course... Uh, one use only um, steel. Uh, some are coated with silicon to make them easier to insert. And uh, it, I won't say it's a painless process. It really depends on the point, but it's a easily one of the safest intervention therapies out there. An intervention meaning something's entering the body. They talk about invasive and non-invasive procedures. No, it's it definitely invasive. I mean, you're in the, you're in the body. Yeah, okay. yeah. You're you're entering tissues. You're going in different types of structures, different compartments, different capsules. Yeah. That's why it's inappropriate to actually measure, to do studies on acupuncture as a double-blind placebo. It's not, that's not appropriate. Um, it, it really can only be single-blind placebo. But, and there's really no placebo in Chinese medicine either, by the way. If, if uh, sugar makes a person better, that's what we would prescribe. So Chinese sciences are very different the, in their approach, in their holistic approach. We have a differential diagnosis, but it's got a different basis. You, you talk about energy and energy flow, I guess, chi. Is. One of the things that I have trouble with is just I'm, I'm low energy. Like I don't feel like I have the energy that I think that I should have. Is that something that acupuncture can help people with? Yeah, I mean, it can uh, to some degree. 
every time you needle a person, no matter if you stimulate or drain, uh, even when you stimulate, it's going to cost them some energy. Your blood sugar will go down during the treatment. So it's important that, that you stimulate the person so that they want to eat correctly. And then over time, they find themselves changing their habits. Maybe they, maybe they quit their job and get a better job for them. Or maybe they uh, get rid of the chi vampires in their life. Or maybe they start jogging. And you don't really know why they do it. And often they don't connect it with the acupuncture at all. It's a really kind of hilarious phenomenon to, to watch, which is the only thing that they've changed uh, is that they came now for acupuncture or Chinese medicine and suddenly their whole life is changing and uh, they, they don't necessarily connect it. It's, a, it's an interesting psychological phenomenon that happens. But once, they're, once their chi starts to, to right itself and flow, then a lot of things uh, will improve. Energy would be one. Uh, sometimes it's spirituality. Sometimes they're very luck. You know, uh, I, I had a case, um, and this, this is a real case. The man was about 37 years old and he needed a, wheel, a ramp. So it, his wife bought him and uh, he couldn't walk, but there was no particular reason why he couldn't walk. They had been to the doctors. There, there wasn't anything wrong with him. Uh, within three treatments, now he was using a, a walker, and then he was using a cane. Then I had him going upstairs. After that, she got pregnant. He got a new job. They moved to Ohio. You talk about the uh, acupuncture with the needles, but you also said Chinese herbs or Chinese medicine. Do they go in conjunction with each other? Like Yeah, they do. In, in China... Chinese medicine is herbs. Herbalism is the Chinese medicine. Um, and the Chinese pharmacology is very sophisticated and, and ancient, obviously. Uh, we don't know when the acupuncture really began. There are needles that were found in the Caucasus 20-some thousand years old that weren't used for sewing. So we don't know when it started particularly. Uh, Bloodletting, of course, has been done around the world for thousands of years, maybe hundreds of thousands of years. But in China, you had either become an acupuncturist or an herbalist. I'm primarily an acupuncturist, but I do practice the herbal as well. Um, the herbal provides a... Look, if you were going to invade a, a country, you wouldn't want only the Army or only the Air Force or only special forces. You'd want all of them. Acupuncture is special forces. Yeah, you can target things. You can control things, right? So, you know, on your hand here, uh, you know, you have the lumbar, the, the uh, thoracic, and the cervical. So I can find blockages in there and I can control that. But I can also go right to the area and I can try and break up scar tissue, fascia, reset muscles with motor points. Um, and then, of course, then you have the energetics. Because if I, if I go for your, um, your structure without changing fundamentally, let's say that you're constantly consuming Pepsis, and those Pepsis are creating the conditions of a, of a gut. Even if the gut isn't necessarily big, but it feels big. And if it feels big, then the body changes its fascia. It's like a system of pulleys. When it changes these ways, suddenly now you have a, a preloaded condition in the disc. Well, the chances are good that that person is going to start the, the degenerative disc syndrome. And, and degenerative disc is just part of what we call bitong, painful obstruction. There's lots of kinds of bitong. And um, the entire category of arthritis it all follows the bitong. What you talk about is a kidney, um, is a kidney deficiency, kidney chi deficiency. When we look at kidney chi, of course, we focus on the adrenals, but it's not only the adrenals, right? So uh, then the testicles become involved, the thyroid becomes involved, especially for females. Uh, so there's a, a lot of things that go into it, and that's why Chinese medicine is so different because it's holistic, and it focuses on a, a big system. The downside is you don't have that specificity of that Latin-based name telling you exactly what it is. But because you're not having that one thing, you're not getting 20 meds to, to chase it. You're getting one herbal formula. It, yes, it has a, several herbs in it, but they're known to work together in a certain way. They've been around for hundreds or thousands of years working together. They've been well described and they're very safe. Are you seeing any more of uh, emerging between Western medicine and, and Chinese medicine? Because for a long time, if you had a primary care physician and they weren't treating your issue to your satisfaction and you were to suggest to them, well, maybe I'm going to go see somebody about acupuncture, they, they may not have a high opinion of that. But do you see that changing? Yeah, that, that attitude has changed. Um, as for them going out of the way to understand, not so much. But they do recognize, hey, this does work. It's hard to say it doesn't. The Germany did a study of over 500,000 people 
and there was only one extremely adverse reaction. There were a few people who felt very outer body. They didn't like that. Uh, it was like 20 some cases, but only one adverse. And when you have that kind of statistic, it's, it just shows how safe it is when you have over 500,000 cases. So they know that it's effective. And we know they know it's effective because so many of them are <laughs> taking our medicine and doing it without necessarily taking the time to go get the Chinese uh, training, right? They're, they're doing it based on Western training. People should be trained uh, and, and, and they should get proper training for that. And, you know, I went to a, a, a school, it was in California, you know, it was twice the number of hours we require in this state. And in California or Florida, I could be a primary care, I could adjust, uh, you know, prescription medications even, uh, because I got, I had to take boards in biomedical as well as the three boards that I had to for Chinese medicine. Something that's refreshing is when you see uh, Western medicine that says, absolutely, if, if, if I'll work in conjunction with your yes. chiropractor or your person right. that you're seeing for your acupuncture, and I like to see the same thing, you know, reciprocate that. If you, if you have a primary care physician, I'll gladly work with your primary care physician as a team because I have found that uh, patients, they, 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 they don't want their healthcare practitioners to butt heads or to argue. They, they want right. them all to be on Team Kelly or Team whoever. So I am seeing a little bit more of that collaborative effort between Western and, and Chinese and chiropractors and physical therapists yes. working together. Before you would consider sure. them as, you know, well, if you see a chiropractor, you're probably not going to see a physical therapist, et cetera, like that. But now I'm seeing much more collaboration. Well, and that's the way it needs to be because uh, there was an attitude, you know, just to stick up for the chiropractors. There was an attitude that bone setting was ridiculous and it existed for like a hundred years. Well, it's not ridiculous. The Chinese have been doing it for thousands of years. Uh, of course, it makes sense. If this bone's out of place, it's going to pull on a ligament. It's going to pull on a nerve. The nerve is going to send a, a signal to the brain um, and, and that's a bad condition. So setting the bone is very important. Now, what if the bone doesn't want to set? You need to soften the tissues. That could be massage. It could be cupping. It could be acupuncture. Uh, it might be that uh, you can't even, sometimes the acupuncture won't work until you've had cupping. Uh, sometimes nothing will work until you've had cupping. So cupping can be very important because of the shaw that builds up inside the muscles. Uh, and so it's, it's important to, to have that attitude. I also tell my patients, don't replace your dermatologist, your dentist, your optometrist, uh, with a, or your gynecologist with uh, Chinese medicine. Uh, we do have obstetrics gynecology in Chinese medicine, but not in that way. So, uh, you know, you have to, you, I do have people that come in and they don't trust Western medicine ev anymore. Uh, Western medicine this. And I'm like, well, when you need it, you need it. You know, it can save your life and it can absolutely save your life. And I will tell them, get your colonoscopies, okay? You know, just get, get those done. Uh, men, get your DREs done and find out if you have any problems with your prostate. Uh, there's no substitution for going to your doctor like that. You've got to, you've got to have it. Yeah. Well, I've always, I've always believed in the proactive nature of healthcare. Well, you're a fascinating person, and, and Thank also you. you were, you were telling me that you do teach Tai Chi. I do. And, and martial, martial arts in general. general. And martial arts in general. How do you incorporate that with your, with your practice here? It's, you mean with the actual medical practice? Very few people will come. I, I tell them all the time. I told a guy today, you need qigong and Tai Chi, you know. But uh, frequently they want the magic needle, you know. I mean, it is. To Westerners, it's still kind of like, oh, what's happening there, you know? There's no drugs in the needle, but they, that's the way they see it. They see it like, a, you know, it's a magic needle. Uh, so if, they're, if they have to wave their arms around, it's like something else. Uh, tai Chi Qigong for a practice of changing a person's life is a multi-year commitment. But I have seen it work absolute wonders with, with people, you know, five years later, their spines better than they were before. Their osteoporosis, they go from this to this. That's a huge difference when you have your ADLs are terrible and you could fall just from putting your shirt on, you know, now, and then that, that could be the death knell. Yeah. So if now you have a way to deal with your biophysics and now you can stand correctly and your breathing is better and your asthma, your COPD is less, uh, it's, a huge, it's a huge deal. The transformation uh, process in that is a more continual thing. They have to practice. Now this Chinese science is based primarily on, you mentioned qi. There's some other words that are really special, essence, uh, jing. And then uh, sure, which most people only know from the art of war, if they even think about it then, as the strategic configuration of power. In our case as healers, the, the sure, we wanna build the sure of the positive energy. 
because the two don't like each other. The Bing Qi and the Zheng Qi hate each other. They don't, they won't resolve. It's not like you'll have Bing Qi here and Zheng Qi here. They don't, that doesn't happen. When you have Bing here, the Qi recedes. It's almost like a fear of it in some way. The nerves and blood are still flowing, but the limb starts dying. And it's a slow process. And I see it all the time in people's hands. Like the chi is flowing right up to here, and then, then their fingers look more aged because the chi is not circulating. So the goal is to recede that chi and to build the, the shirt of the positive energy. The zheng chi means upright or righteous chi. And uh, also means correcting. So if we do uh, zheng gu, zheng gu tui na is a bone uh, correcting tui na. Uh, so this, this idea of the correct energy coming out it's a it's a force and it comes out of the it comes out of the cores of the body the energy or the chakras as most people call them, and then exudes through all the limbs, and it's the it's the dangest thing you know when you go through the school you get you know you got an engineer brain, and you go man none of this doesn't make any sense. One of the things for example they say the the arthritis when you kick out the wind, the feng, that it goes out the knuckles. Now, that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. And, but darn it, if you build the energy body, there comes a day when you transform and it feels just like that. It feels like air coming out of your knuckles. Or the first time you feel the chi going in and out of your third eye. It's the, it's the dangest thing. And then you know it's real. With my patients, I aim that in the first or second visit for them to know that chi is real and for them to feel it and then to have the, the twitches. Because then when they're twitching, their sympathetic nervous system is giving up. Their fight or flight is giving up. And then their rest and digest, their parasympathetic, can turn on and they can start to heal properly. Because while the Bing Qi controls the body, controls the most territory, they won't heal properly. If it controls a significant part of the brain, they have migraines or whatever, they won't get well. Well, I will say this. Uh, I've been fascinated with it since I've, I guess, heard about it back 25, 30 years ago. I don't have a tremendous understanding of it. So this has helped in that respect. But I wanted to, I, I did, before we let you go, because I know you were busy, but uh, I wanted to say you, you do, you're accepting patients. So if, of course. If we, will, we will leave your information in the description so that people who are watching this or maybe uh, interested in, in getting a session with you will have that information. And then uh, also if uh, they're interested in maybe seeking uh, Tai Chi training or even something beyond that. I'm looking to, to, to build a, a boxing dojo, a combination of a place where I can teach the boxing, grappling, and the Tai Chi, and then have a place where lots of different styles can come in, um, and, and that is a, an ongoing effort. <laughs> you know, things, things slowly build. Sounds like you're pretty busy. I do stay pretty busy. So I want to thank you for your time today. Absolutely. And, and, and appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you very much.